We have found ourselves at a crazy, cool, completely different thrifting experience, yeah. okay? Today we are about to see what really happens to your clothes after we donate them. You know, we do that sometimes. Yeah. We donate our things, we're being good Samaritans. Right, but where do those clothes go? We're like Mary Kay and Ashley we in, really in that series. We are at LA Vintage with Danya. She is the owner of this incredible space. Can you just tell us where we are and what we're doing here? Yeah, so welcome to LA Vintage. We are a vintage wholesale recycling company. So we sell vintage clothing in bulk to retailers, designers, and stylists all over the world. Wow. That is so cool. So this is basically what happens after clothes that you donate to Goodwill, they have even a second life after Goodwill. Yeah. First things first, when you walk in, all you see like Mad said is just clothes. This is a mountain. Everywhere. And it's like a construction site on top of it too, in the sense that you hear like forklifts and things like that. <laughs> but it's really just people working on Close. How does someone know to come here? Is this Goodwill is coming straight from their Goodwill bins to you? Goodwill and Salvation Army and all those thrift stores, they have excess donations. Okay. So people are donating, 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 and they contact someone like us with consider your rag calls. Okay. And they basically tell us, hey, like come pick up the clothing. And we also buy the stuff that doesn't sell in their stores. So the whole goal is to obviously try to have as little clothing as possible end up in the trash. In the landfill. You obviously are still getting really nice stuff. Yeah, we get great stuff. Like We get the weirdest stuff, but we also get amazing stuff. And it's cool because like these stylists and everyone comes and like picks for their taste because right. everyone has a different mood board or a different style that they're looking for. And we have a little bit for everyone. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you the entire warehouse, take you through the whole process. We're gonna go from what comes in here, how we sort the stuff, what we take, what we don't take, and then we're gonna end with our vintage clothing department so you can see where it all ends up. Oh, I'm excited. Oh my god, if one thing about me, I love a thrift. Yeah. This just feels like thrift on crack. Oh, it Did does. I say that? <laughs> say crack again. Crack. So welcome to the clothing department. Right over here we have the cubes that we were showing you earlier of the clothing. So anything from like, you know, the 70s, 60s, anything earlier, um, even 2000s. Yeah. And then anything that's even branded designer, they put into the vintage barrel. And then everything else over here is put into different categories and this is sent overseas and exported to third world countries. That's so cool. Oh my god, literally supports small business. Yeah. yeah. So what happens if you go like sorting and you find like damaged clothes? Yeah. So in the very first step of this. Yeah, so that happens a lot of times obviously, but because we're a recycling plant, we try to recycle as much as possible. Only one to two percent of the stuff that comes in here isn't recycled and it's actually considered trash. Um, but like for example, like we get damaged cashmere all the time. We send that to Italy and basically gets broken down and then reused and remade mm -hmm. into new cashmere. So cool. Yeah. So they're everything basically has a second life. They really know what's trending too, which is cool because yeah. with fashion is hard, you know. But have you come up on anything like so crazy that you can't believe was here? Well, we get things all the time, and it's funny because sometimes I'll look at it. And I'm like, how on earth is this even yeah. worth something? And I'll look it up, and it's like a thousand dollars for a t-shirt, and you're like. How is that even possible? But it's like a damaged, like bad tea. So we get those things all the time, but yeah. it's just about like finding the needle literally in the hip. This is wow. literally yeah. the golden ticket. Yeah. In a single day, how how much clothing are you sorting through? Like how many boxes can you go yeah. through? We're working thousands and thousands of pounds. And to give you an idea, like in a year, we sort approximately three to four million pounds of clothing. Just clothing. And we do shoes and accessories as well. Aside from the three yeah. to four million pounds. Yeah. That's God's work. This is where our vintage team actually checks if it is vintage or not. So Whoa. behind you are all women's and men's parts that pass the test. Okay. And these are going to go into our showroom after. Can you actually define like what vintage really is? Because there's so many different definitions mm -hmm. of vintage. So what, what do you look for with vintage? Vintage is anything 20 years and earlier. So right now that would be 2000s and earlier. Basically with vintage for us, it's a little different because 
even if it is older, we look for style as well. We're not going to put like a grandma shirt right, in there right, just because right. it's from the 40s, you know? Right. So we definitely do another curation. We also put in like designer stuff, like we will put that in there too as okay. vintage, even if it's new. How we decide if it's considered like if we can go into our vintage yeah. department is first we have a lot of new boards that our clients give us. So a lot of times they'll be like, hey, so we're looking for this person. Can you pull this for us? And we usually like, Pull that and then you know put that accordingly into the rooms as well but also just anything that's older so now 2000s is back so anything 2000s and earlier once they have pulled out those first vintage bins and now they're double checking to make sure they they will make the cut what happens to the clothes that don't they just get put back in with their, everything else yeah so usually what happens is it does get put back over there but it gets exported to third world countries for the most part nice. so um and then if it's damaged we usually recycle it okay can other people like the general public shop from you or how does that work so we get this question a lot yeah i but bet unfortunately we're open only to people who buy in bulk so yeah. uh, we usually ask for a reseller's permit when they come right. in here but if they're a designer or a stylist they can also come in here what is that are they styling for a movie so yeah so it's really cool because a lot of times like costume houses you're kind of just getting what you get but mm. here it's literally like you have no idea what you're going to get right. across right because you're going to get one thing today and then tomorrow you come and it's going to be completely different because we update our rooms every single mm -hmm. day and so usually like if it's like a stylist for a movie they come in here sometimes they have like character mood boards and we'll work with them we're like okay we know that this character wants these items so we'll look and suggest some stuff but a lot of times they'll just go into our rooms and they just pick whatever they want oh amazing we work with people all over the world so you don't have to be only in the u.s but if you're somewhere else we ask for more in-depth questions so we have and it's just a very like hands-on process you need to become stylist like, okay i'm down ah <laughs> loop hole loop hole so not only do we do clothing and shoes, but we also do accessories. So it's our accessory department. Amazing. All right, so obviously like looking at this, don't get it twisted, y'all. This is definitely fake, but like if the logo was in better condition, how else could you tell when you get like fake things in? Yeah, so a lot of times we'll look for just little details, like the zipper, for example, oh, totally. should definitely say Chanel on there. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it doesn't, that's like a giveaway. It's also plastic, yeah, that's so what yeah, thinking, like Chanel yeah. would not do that. Um, then we like look in here too, like even the interior one should have different right. detailing that says, because every like designer luxury brand usually has their mark on, every on everything. So this one is real. Poach usually like what they do is they have this little thing over here yeah where they have oh, wow. the writing and stuff yeah. so usually you can tell because it's like leather first of all it's a good quality it says coach the lettering on the logo is also right which is another key thing sometimes mm. with designer labels the fake ones will have like an extra a, yeah, long like L slight, or something mm. yeah or something like that so that they don't get sued even though yeah. everything else is basically it says, exactly. <laughs> think, obviously there's a mix of like real designer fake designer do stylists come in and they're like, we don't want anything fake, or are they kind of like aesthetically, that's fine? I think right now there's a whole movement of like the fake, like especially because Gucci did that whole campaign a few years ago where they were like creating fake versions of mm -hmm. their logo. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of prompted a whole thing in the fashion industry. So people will actually, if they see like Gucci, they'll buy it. Right. Which is crazy. Like unironically almost. Or they'll, yeah. they'll wear it it's ironically. It's like a parody almost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people are looking for that. And then for the movies and stuff, uh, I guess with logos, they can't really obviously show a fake mm. purse or something. So they'll try to like, you know, flip it around or something like that. Sure. Um, but a lot of like retailers also buy this too. I'll take it. So we're now at the showroom, which is the third step in the process. And I'm gonna show you guys what happens to the clothing that is damaged. You know, I was mentioning back there that sometimes there's stains on it. So this is what we do with it. We dye it into different colors. And every month we do like a fun three, three different colors and we dye the clothing and then we put it in here, as you can see. That's cool. awesome. So these are still like good brands. Yeah, yeah. And the great thing is that the dye, when we dye it, it makes it softer. So the yeah. material is like super soft. Even if it's modern, we dye it and then it feels like a vintage feel, which is great. It just shows too that like, just because something has stains on it. Give it a little TLC. Yeah, and yeah. you hope that people watching too would think about that too. Like if they have something stained, 
that maybe they would think about dyeing it before they yeah. grow it out. Do you ever tie dye? Like yeah, so we used to like last summer. I think this summer. Yeah, when it was not, so popular. Yeah, it's not in like during quarantine that was really popular. Yeah. So we used to do that back then. Yeah, that's a dark time kind of... in my life. <laughs> what about tie dye? Ugh, there's so much more to life. So now we're gonna move on to like the nitty gritty of the sorting. So here we have a bunch of racks, curated racks. So for example, like we put all the beaded clothing in one area. We try to put all the delicate like 70s items over here. And then over here, we try to put like the prairie dresses and the vintage dresses that are really, really fragile and hang, hang up as much as possible. Usually when people come in here, they're coming in here with an appointment. So they get one of these cards and they're just kind of going around and like picking what they like. And so we try to hang up these items, especially like the vintage dresses, because mm -hmm. a lot of stylists will look for you know older dresses or they're shooting a movie and they need like a wedding dress or something right. like right. that. So we'll try to hang up as much as possible on this side. Um, a lot of the stuff that's hung up too are things that are a little more special. So they're really old or, or like fragile. a little more valuable yeah. too. That's why we try to hang it up. With the beaded stuff, they just would get destroyed in our boxes. So we just try to put that up. Yeah, well, so your job is basically curator, the sorter, because this just makes it so much more visually like easy to the eye mm -hmm. or if it's I'm like shopping in, yeah you know yeah. it's you're, you're setting up a store yeah and so we try to like appeal to both types of clients because you know some people they love the dig so we have like our fresh cards over here so they can just like dig dig That's dig yeah and then we also try to appeal to people who are like okay this is a lot you know, it's a lot of clothing, this is overwhelming. Yeah. Like, I just need my stuff, and that's why we put stuff up in hangers too. Nice. Right. So these are from the 70s. They're both different dresses, different vibes, as you can see. Um, this one over here is a gunny sacks. Uh, very, very popular with our vintage community. They're always looking for gunny sacks and prairie dresses. Is that a brand or is that the style? Yeah, that's a brand. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, very popular in the 70s. Um, this one's really cute. Very yeah, this pretty. is like, you could sell this at Urban right now. Yeah, I was going to say, this. it's just so crazy how fashion comes back, right? Like, all we're really trying to do is just mimic things of the past yeah, all yeah. the time. Like, a better time. <laughs> yeah, always. Let's miss the good old days, huh? But when you look at this, like the quality is just a lot better than yeah. when you get these sure. days. And then like another thing that we look out for is like a paper tag right here. And a lot of older clothing will have that. And then even like the zippers, like Talon is like a very popular brand of zippers back then. Wow. Um, so there's just like the little details that yeah. we look out for in our department. Um, this one just like screams, you know, vintage yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. Scream 70s, everything was really bright back then. Um, again, with the tag, like, it's just, this one's not paper, but you can see that it's bigger. Oh, so, yeah. And then, like, yeah. you know, other tags. Now we have, you know, smaller tags these days. This one's a square one, it's big. Oh, that's and so yeah, crazy. Even if you just feel it, it's You can just... totally tell, especially mm -hmm. like with me tags. Yeah. Now that you guys kind of got like a little tour, I want you guys just to have fun and go in there and see the rest of it. Okay. Oh, all you, right. You want us to shop? No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. If you, if you well, insist. If you oh my God. This is like straight out of the movie, you know? Almost famous. <laughs> I don't know the movie well enough to quote it, but editor, insert a quote here. Okay, Dania, seriously, thank you so much for having us. Thank this was so cool. Now I know for sure that there are amazing companies doing like the Lord's work mm -hmm. and then giving clothes a second life. Thank you. Thank you for coming, guys. Of course. We solved yeah. some crime today. It, this was like a real, real mission. You know what sure. we need to do. Are we <laughs> say we'll solve any crime by dinner, dinner time. time.